Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to plan out your slab built robot project. So the first thing I did was think about what kind of robot I wanted to make. So I did some research, looked on Google Images, I figured I'd want to make a dinosaur robot because my son is obsessed with dinosaurs right now, uh, especially T-Rex. So I looked at some actual pictures of T-Rex and then I figured out how I could kind of break that down into some basic forms and turn it into a robot so I could actually build it. Um, then you're going to need to come up with some sketches. So when you do your sketch, it should be um, as three-dimensional as possible. I tried to draw, draw small, but it just ended up being really large and off the page. And as you can see, I sketched it out. I added shadows so you would know that they were round and not flat. I labeled things as far as what form it's going to be, a cone, cylinder, and I really tried to plan out how I was going to build this thing and what the details are and what it was going to look like. Okay, the next step is to take your two-dimensional drawing and turn it into a three-dimensional robot by building templates. So that's what I'm going to show you next. Okay, what I'm doing now is taking my sketch and actually turning it into templates by using paper. So for the head, uh, this is going to be the head, and this is going to go on the side of the head. Now this is going to go on this side and this side, and since they're the same size, um, I don't need to cut two out of piece, pieces of paper, um, but I will cut two out of clay, uh, but they're the same size. So you can reuse this as many times as you need to. I do like to tape it together just so I know how it's going to form. Um, of course, it starts like that as paper, but if you want to see how big it gets in real life, what it's going to kind of be shaped like, that's why I kind of tape these together. And then I formed the uh, neck right here out of a cylinder. Uh, then this is going to be the body. Now, I'm trying to figure out the tail, and I'm going to give you a little secret. If you want to make a cone, what I like to do first is just take a large rectangle and then I'm gonna make it into a cone the size that I want it. Then while you're holding it there just take your scissors and you're just gonna cut straight through and I've already started cutting so I'm gonna try to keep cutting where I just cut all the way down and you'll end up with a perfect template, hopefully, so that you won't have to keep trying out different cones and seeing what works. Okay, so that way it cuts off everything else you don't need. This is the part that I do need for my tail. So if you're trying to make a cone, just start with a really large piece of paper and curve it. So this is what the tail is going to look like. I'm going to try to curve it after I uh, put it together in clay. And of course, I'm going to score and slip it right there. And that's the template for the tail. Okay, so now I've cut out all my templates and I am ready to roll out my slab and actually cut these templates out of clay. And if you are watching this, I assume that you know I wedged this clay and I rolled this out with a slab roller. But when you roll clay out with a slab roller, it always has a few yucky parts on it and also the canvas texture, um, which is not very pretty. So before you do anything, with a clean rubber kidney or a metal kidney would work too, we're just going to smooth it out to get rid of that canvas texture so we won't have to do it so much later. And Cut as straight as you can. We'll leave the rest of it for the rest of all of your templates. And I will tell you a secret about round forms versus flat forms. Since I know that I'm going to curve this form, I need to curve it right now when it's nice and fresh because if I waited until it dried a little bit, it would crack. And it's actually st starting to crack just a little bit there. Um, already. Um, another thing you're going to do is I'm going to score and slip these together 
And in order for them to fit better, while I score and slit them, I'm going to bevel. So bevel means cutting at a 45 degree angle. And since I know how these are going to fit together, I'm going to bevel this one that way. And I'm going to bevel this one that way. And I don't necessarily have to score and slip it together right now, but I do want to put it in this curved position so that I don't uh, crack it later by trying to curve it when it's too dry, when it doesn't want to curve. So that's going to be the shape of the head. And then I'm going to put two slabs on the sides uh, right here. So I'm just going to set that aside for now, just like that, to let it stiffen up a little bit. And then I'm going to score and slip it. Okay. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I've created this form. So this is going to be the front and back of my form, and these are going to be the sides. So one over here and one over here. Again, I'm going to use these twice, so I don't have to cut them out of paper twice. I just need to cut them out of clay twice. I already have a nice edge right here, already cut, so I'm going to use that edge. Now, I'm going to show you how to score and slip these pieces that I cut earlier um, because now they're leather hard, so um, they are stiff enough that I can hold it like this and it's not going to be drooping. As you can see, if I held this up, which I just freshly cut, it doesn't hold its shape. So this is wet clay and this is dried for a couple hours, so it's nice and leather hard. So I'm going to be building this like this, two pieces here, one piece here, one piece here not have a top and bottom yet, but I'll get to that. Now you could score and slip these two pieces together like this, but I'm going to bevel because again it creates a 45 degree angle which makes a little more surface area to score and slip to rather than this is a fourth of an inch. If you bevel it's probably uh, three-eighths of an inch of its surface area, so less likely to crack because more surface area, and also it fits together. So instead of having two pieces at the end here, if you bevel them, they fit together perfectly in the, at the corner, so it's a little more like the plan that you came up with originally. Okay, I'm going to score and slip and bevel all at the same time. So you see how this is not beveled yet. I'm going to do all three at the same time. I'm beveling, and I'm scoring, and I'm slipping all at the same time. Three steps in one, which is great. I like anything that saves me time, and I usually students like shortcuts too. Same thing, this piece is going to go there, so I have to bevel it. So I'm beveling, which removes a little bit, as you can see. Not the same as cutting, really, I'm scraping away the bevel, right? But that works. Just need to get down to the edge there. Okay, so now I've scored and slipped and beveled both pieces. And this piece goes on there. And one more tip for getting your corners to be nice and sound so that they're not going to crack apart is to take a piece of fresh clay and just roll a nice thin coil. And we're going to put it right there in the corner. So this is just going to reinforce the corner and strengthen it a little bit. Um, so you can either smooth that in with your finger or a modeling tool would be great, just your wooden modeling tool. So there you go. Okay, now I'm about ready to go ahead and do the rest of the pieces.
Okay, so now I've got this together. It doesn't look pretty yet, but I'll show you some ways to make it prettier and more rectangular. And I did not cut out a paper template for the top or the bottom. And I said I was going to tell you why, so now I'm going to tell you why. It is so much easier if you have a top that's just open and a bottom that's open, and you know you just want to put a flat piece on it. It's so much easier to just to take this and score and slip it to the whole slab than it is to try to pre-measure a piece that you think is going to fit because it never fits the way you think it does. Uh, when you translate from paper to clay, things always get a little bit different. So I just take this whole thing and score it. A whole bunch of slip on there. And I take this whole thing, score it. and just put the whole thing on there. So we know that fits perfectly. It should be a little bit bigger than what I have right here, but then I cut off what I don't need. I always leave a little bit extra around there when I'm cutting because I like to kind of marry it into the side, just strengthen it a little bit. This tool, and just marry that right up into the slides. Scan Arnett, please call the position One, two, three. And I just cut it so it's very fresh. And before I put it together, I'm going to bevel these edges. This one goes like that. That one goes like that. <clears throat> and beveling does increase the surface area. And so there's more space for you to score and slip. And it also just makes the ends fit together a little bit. So like I said, as soon as you cut pieces that are going to be round, go ahead and curve them. Don't necessarily have to score and slip them together yet, but go ahead and curve them so they don't crack later. All right. This piece is going to be the bottom. The main symmetric part of the T-Rex is what you see beveled also. So beveled under this way. This is going to be the same angle, so I just take my filling knife or change the angle, just go down to the other end. So they're beveled like this. Okay? And I'm going to make sure they fit together. The ends. This is freshly cut. It just goes across. This is very fresh and wedged. So you're going to beat the hair like this. Now, I know that this is going to be the belly of the dinosaur, so I, I want it to flare out just a little bit, get a little bit bigger in the middle and stay small there. So while this is still wet, I'm just going to take my fingers, try not to bust that open, and I'm just going to push it out. So I'm just stretching that a little bit. Just making it a little bit bigger in the middle while the clay is still wet and able to do that. As it dries, you won't be able to do that anymore. 